I really love this shirt. Red Dead Redemption, like a logo with Vegeta. That's the same Prince Redemption because Maj and Vegeta's moment. It's one of my favorites, as is this movie. Another favorite from being on Toonami back in the day that was taped for me. This is a tightly constructed story with a ton of action, hilarious humor, interesting inspirations, and great visuals. The states are astronomical too. Seriously, there's a ton of action, everybody gets moments to shine, even Krillin. And Piccolo does his usual Batman-like thing, which is great. Goku is still a no-fuss kind of fighter here, which is kind of refreshing to see since, you know, he tends to give the villains more chances in the anime. His dynamic with Vegeta, who is a standout always, is welcome as this is actually their first moment sharing the battlefield at the same time. That makes it special in so many ways, and this is Vegeta's first movie appearance too. And he's a Super Saiyan, but a standout has to be the instant transmission fights between Metacooler and Goku incredible and creative. Metacooler himself, another personal favorite of mine, looks great and becomes more and more intimidating by the end. He's a constantly evolving threat that the stakes get higher and higher and higher. They're, they're, it's always outdoing itself and that keeps it engaging as you watch. You get the sense that if he had not been so prideful, a common theme in Dragon Ball Z, he literally could have killed everyone and taken over the galaxy. But his pride and his greed are what do him in in the end. And those believable stakes are enhanced by the Big Getty star. The sci-fi element in this movie that feels very inspired by both 2001 A Space Odyssey and Star Trek The Motion Picture and many other sci-fi movies. Unfortunately, we only get one exposition dump and not much more exploration outside of that. And I blame that on the brief runtime, always screwing the, those world building issues up. Cause man, that's a cool idea. That theme of Vegeta being prideful and the Big Getty star being a quick route to power really ties into a beautiful ending with Vegeta. He finds the original chip that made Cooler and fused Cooler into the Big Getty star, and he's holding it, considering the power it could offer him to surpass Goku and become the strongest in the universe. But that would mean cheating and taking the quick route, and that's against his Saiyan pride. And that pride won't allow for shortcuts, so Vegeta crushes it. Brilliant! I die laughing every time at Goku and Vegeta falling from the sky and hitting the ground at high velocity at the end. That was just a genuine moment of humor. If you've never seen the abridged version that DBZ abridged that Team 4 Star did of this, it's one of the funniest ones they've ever done. And it makes the movie better, and I can't help but not think about that. Now to the tough part. The canon status. The unofficial canon status. Because we don't know they're not canon, but this one is particularly murky. If not for the opening scene and the dialogue about Goku having been to New Namek, which is great to see, New Namek for once, it'd be easy to place after he recovers from his heart disease as we know time has passed since the last cooler film. But alas, Dan Day is the Guardian, which means it has to be sometime in the 10 days before the Cell Games, as that's when Goku first went to New Namek to get Dende for the Guardian role, which is referenced twice. Gohan still looks like a kid, not a teenager, which means it implies that he hasn't been in the hyperbolic time chamber. He has long hair instead of short hair and he doesn't go Super Saiyan. You could chalk that up to an animation mistake and not knowing and kind of dismiss that if you needed to. But if it's in that time period, he and Goku should also be Super Saiyan the entire time because that was their training. Could they have taken a break to go to New Namek for a day? Yeah, they could have, but it's also against what they said. But since this was made a couple years before that arc and with only some probable hints and spoilers from Akira Toriyama, which is wild to think about that they got, I'm willing to hand wave a couple things because you just have to. You have to assume that this is Team Gohan who doesn't go Super Saiyan and the design is just the wrong one. And you also have to assume he and Goku had to rest from their Super Saiyan states to go and help at New Namek because it was urgent. This will occur again, commonly, especially in the next film. Or you can just pretend it happened some other time since Vegeta goes Super Saiyan and not Super Ascended. With those small adjustments in headcanon, it can work just fine for the most part. Or you can continue to subscribe to me. Ah, just kidding. You can subscribe to the alternate dimension ideas. They're hilariously convoluted, yet true within the canon. A final option is bringing back the dream theory from the earlier movies. In fact, it works pretty great here. Just imagine that Goku dreams this while he is suffering and recovering from the viral heart disease. Think about it. He knows Vegeta is Super Saiyan, but knows Gohan isn't. Krillin is his best friend and gets time to shine. He imagines sharing the battlefield with Vegeta. He imagines a new Namek as like the old one and randomly imagines Dende as the guardian due to his talent. Maybe this is where he gets the idea in the Cell games for Dende to be the new guardian. Lastly, he imagines a fiercely strong enemy that returns stronger than ever that can only be achieved by releasing the full potential of their energy and power. On top of that, the Big Getty Star could be an allegory 
for the heart disease killing his body as it kills new Namek. I really prefer to hand wave this stuff and make it canon, but this really clears it up. It just fits. All in all, this is one of the best ones. Insanely rewatchable, insanely creative, and I love it so, so much. I literally think this could be one of the one of the top, top, top tier ones. I give Dragon Ball Z The Return of Cooler five out of five stars. Titles of these two always confuse me because you have Cooler's Revenge, and the return of cooler so the return of cooler implies that it's the second one right but cooler's revenge also implies that it could be the second one so some people think cooler's revenge is the second to return of cooler but cooler would have never had to return without the first one because he's getting revenge for frieza but this is also the return of cooler cooler's revenge from the first movie i'm done always look for the good and subscribe